There are many reasons why humans have never explored Mars. In fact, reaching the red planet on average around 140 million miles away will be a mammoth feat. Colder than Antarctica, with little to no oxygen, Mars is a hostile environment. The longer it takes astronauts to get there and the longer they stay, the more they are at risk. A round-trip mission to Mars would last at least an astonishing 21 months, 9 months to get there, 3 months on the planet, and then another 9 to get back. Well, are you willing to do that? But what if there was a faster way to get there? Even more than that of the SpaceX Starship. Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Most rockets today run on conventional chemical fuels. The trouble is that all such propellants have a relatively small energy density, energy stored per unit volume, and a low specific impulse, the efficiency with which they can generate thrust. This means that the overall thrust of the rocket, the specific impulse multiplied by the mass flow rate of the exhaust gas and Earth's gravity, is low. Chemical propellants can therefore only get you so far, with the Moon being the traditional limit. To reach distant planets and other deep space destinations, spacecraft usually exploit the gravitational pull of multiple different planets. Such journeys, however, are circuitous and take a long time. NASA's Juno mission, for example, needed five years to get to Jupiter, while the Voyager craft took more than 30 years to get to the edge of the solar system. Such missions are also restricted by narrow and infrequent launch windows. That's why NASA scientists have come up with the idea of harnessing nuclear energy to heat fuel called nuclear thermal propulsion, or NTP. Nuclear propulsion, either electric or thermal, could extract more energy from a given mass of fuel than is possible via combustion-based propulsion, says Dale Thomas, former associate director at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, now at the University of Alabama in Huntsville. In fact, the United States began developing nuclear rockets back in the 1950s, but the idea was scrapped when budgets got cut in the 1970s. However, by 2020, the U.S. government has brought nuclear-powered spacecraft back into the agenda by awarding nearly $100 million to three companies, General Atomics, Lockheed Martin, and Blue Origin. They will use this money to carry out the demonstration rocket for Agile Cislunar Operations, or DRACO, program in 2026, sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense's research agency, DARPA. In the initial phase, the companies will aim to demonstrate that NTP can be used to launch rockets into low-Earth orbit, with DARPA targeting thrust-to-weight ratios comparable to current chemical rocket systems. The NTP propulsion system operates by heating gas, usually hydrogen or ammonia, through a nuclear fission reactor and expanding that gas through a nozzle to generate efficient thrust. Therefore, successfully launching and flying nuclear space reactors of the DRACO program will revolutionize spaceflight, allowing humanity to venture further with higher chances of survival and success for any type of mission. In the DRACO program, General Atomics will design the NTP reactor and outline detailed plans for the propulsion subsystem, while Blue Origin and Lockheed Martin will independently plan for the spacecraft. The fission reactor, which uses a special low-enriched uranium, which can be made using fuel recycled from existing nuclear reactors. Containing only 20% enriched uranium, it is not suitable for nuclear weapons conversion. The reactor will not be activated, i.e. at the threshold level, until the spacecraft reaches a safe nuclear orbit. In other words, in case of emergency, any contamination will be dispersed harmlessly into space. Lockheed Martin has partnered with BWX Technologies in Lynchburg, Virginia, to develop the reactor and produce the HALU fuel. BWX stated that the Draco rocket could launch as early as 2027. Elsewhere, researchers at the Idaho National Laboratory in the United States are assisting NASA in developing and testing materials necessary for nuclear rockets at the Transient Reactor Test Facility near Idaho Falls. They conducted a test run last year to validate computer models and test new sensor and experimental fuel pellet. Long-term goals include identifying which uranium materials, synthetic structures, and compounds work best under extreme conditions of NTP reactors. The heat from the reactor will heat hydrogen fuel, resulting in the greatest change in velocity, which rocket scientists call delta V, for a given mass. The downside of hydrogen is its low density, and rockets will require large tanks. Other propellants, such as ammonia, have a lower velocity per kilogram of propellant, but are much denser. In Huntsville, Thomas pointed out that ammonia would be the ideal fuel to take astronomers to Mars from NASA's Lunar Gateway, a space station that's orbiting the Moon. After publishing a technology assessment on NTP for the United States Aerospace and Space Institute in 2020, Thomas concluded that conventional NTP systems providing high thrust for short durations of around 50 minutes would be ideal for transits and rendezvous missions. However, there are also dual-mode systems combining NTP with nuclear electric propulsion, NEP. 
NTP engines involve using energy from nuclear reactions to heat fuel expelled from the back of the rocket akin to the airflow from a kid's toy balloon. But NEP, the fission energy is instead used to ionize propellant gas. When the propellant's ionized, the gas can be directed and accelerated by using electromagnetic devices to propel the spacecraft forward. Thus, the thrust from NEP is much lower than the thrust you get from NTP rockets. Essentially, one provides thrust quickly while the other provides low thrust over a longer period. Perfect for extended duration round-trip missions. If someone asks whether NTP or NEP would be better for deep space operations, the answer depends on the kind of mission. For missions of a certain class, such as scientific spacecraft of a certain mass, or crewed missions for certain destinations, NTP would be the better choice, while for other missions, NEP would be the better options. Like a car trip, it depends on the distance, the amount of luggage you're carrying, your scheduling needs, etc. Another method that also utilizes nuclear explosions to generate thrust is called pulse plasma rocket, or PPR. It could address dual needs for high specific impulse, ISP, and high thrust in long duration space travel. PPR is designed to be less complex, lighter, and more affordable than previous concepts while still providing the capabilities needed for efficient space travel. PPR is built on the concept of using pulse plasma bursts to provide thrust through an electromagnetic nozzle. To achieve these cyclical plasma bursts, a nuclear fission system has been researched and designed to achieve the necessary output power for the plasma propulsion process. This system resembles a fission reactor that I mentioned for nuclear thermal propulsion rockets. However, it will have additional uranium pellets tailored to prioritize heating pellets instead of a core. Auxiliary systems in the nuclear system design include coil gun thrusters and magnetic nozzles. The PPR propulsion design requires a target projectile to be superheated into a plasma in less than a second to achieve a full cycle frequency of 1 Hz. Neurotronics analysts focused on the components and neutron modeling of the barrel, projectile, and the combination of the two was performed using an MCNP-6, a Monte Carlo-based particle transport software. MCNP-6 takes initial inputs for a system and then predicts the neutron population growth given the system's characteristics. By using a pulsed mode, the system can be designed to be subcritical when no projectile is present, which would allow for a lower energy cost in the system when not firing. Once operation begins, a fuel projectile would introduce moderated uranium to the system, allowing for an exponential increase in neutrons that would contribute to the energy required to phase the projectile solid into a plasma. How Energies in the United States is currently developing an engine system capable of generating thrust of up to 100,000 N with a specific impulse of 5,000 seconds, meeting two requirements for deep space missions. This makes it a highly promising candidate for future deep space missions. All of this is part of the Phase 1 study funded by NASA's NIAC. They will primarily focus on assessing the neutronics of the system, designing the spacecraft, power system, and necessary subsystems, analyzing the magnetic nozzle capabilities, and determining trajectories and benefits of the PRR. Phase 2 may bring NASA closer to realizing its Martian dreams with enhanced engine designs, real-world trials, and a ship design for protected human flights to Mars. It's not just NASA. In December 2022, the UK space agency, UKSA, awarded funding to the UK rocket company Pulsar Fusion to develop nuclear fission-based power systems for NEP. These things are match-funded, says Pulsar's founder and chief executive officer Richard Dinan. We are going to be putting in way more, more than the UK government, because it benefits us and we don't want to be stopped by the level of funding that the UK space agency is offering. He also has concerns about UK regulations. Dinan points out that UK rules do not include launching fission cores into space, while the US regulatory regime does. The one thing that needs to change is the regulation. At the moment, it doesn't really consider people launching fission cores. It's something that in the US you can do, it's just that the UK regs are pretty prohibitive all around, he explained. For the UKSA funded work, Dinan and his team are working with the Nuclear Advanced Manufacturing Research Center, AMRC, at the University of Sheffield. The nuclear AMRC has been brilliant, really amazing, knowledgeable, he said. Pulsar is working towards plasma experiments using a test chamber that took delivery in 2023. We've just taken delivery of a 7-meter chamber, which we're going to put a 2-tesla electromagnetic field in so we can do real-size, real-world plasma shots at Pulsar, Dinan explained. We'll start with things like argon. We won't be using tritium or anything, just so we can model it to scale. Pulsar sells a 1.5 kilowatt Hall effect thruster, but nuclear power can transform the thrust levels that have been historically from Hall effect technology. 
We know that nuclear propulsion can offer several hundred times the particle exhaust speed compared to the Hall effect thruster, said Dinan. Pulsar fusion, as the name indicates, wants to use fusion reactors for propulsion systems for interplanetary travel. Its plan includes developing a nuclear fusion propulsion prototype by 2025 for a static demonstration, and then from 2027 to manufacture a rocket for in-orbit testing. Fusion propulsion can be directed and fired. It also doesn't have to be efficient. We can lose money and energy because speed and space are fungible with money. I can charge you more if I can get you there faster. For Dinan, the enormous thrust levels that can be achieved mean a speed of service that has a good value proposition. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.